This is a tutorial on mixed integer linear programming. We're going to first of all build a model and then uh, secondly we're going to solve the problem with uh, branch and bound techniques and then as a third, uh, third thing we're going to analyze the solution. So show graphically where the solution is and how to evaluate it. If you haven't seen it yet I'd recommend that you go back and watch the integer programming video for additional information on the example problem. Okay so we have a a refinery optimization problem here where we have a more expensive crude that's $95 per barrel and a less expensive crude which is $80 per barrel and then uh, the refinery produces gasoline and diesel. In reality it produces more than that uh, but uh, for this simplified case we're just going to assume that one barrel of the less expensive produces 10 of gasoline and 20 of diesel and the more expensive one produces 15 of each. We have two variables, x and y, those are our decision variables. I'm going to write it out in the an optimization form. So we have minimize 80 times x plus 95 times y and then subject to the gasoline constraint. I'm also going to say that, that gasoline constraint you have to produce at least 100 gallons. So we have the first crude which is x can produce 10 and the second can produce 15. Um, and then of uh, diesel 20 and 15 for those and I'm going to say that the minimum amount is 160 gallons of diesel. Okay so these are linear constraints and a linear objective function but now I'm going to do something just a little bit different. I'm going to make those integer variables as well. So let's go ahead and program this in the AP monitor modeling language and I'm going to have x is greater than 0 and y is greater than 0 now I have my equations as well. These are the, uh, the first one is the gasoline constraint equation. So the first uh, type of crude can produce uh, 10 and the second can produce 15. That has to be greater than or equal to 100. And then the diesel constraint as well. So I have uh, in this case 20 times x plus 15 times y greater than or equal to 160. Okay, now I want to minimize the total cost. I have my cost of each crude, and I come up with my objective function here, which is 80 times x and 95 times y. This is our mixed integer linear programming problem, and there is our optimal solution. There at x equals uh, 6 and y equals 2.67. I also named those x1 and x2. Okay, so don't be confused by that. So I want integer values for those, uh, 1, two, uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I'm going to do a branch and bound technique or an outer approximation techniques. Or we could do an exhaustive search technique. That is the easiest uh, yet least efficient. So let's go ahead and do that one first just to show how to solve these mixed integer linear programming problems. There's my optimal solution at 2.67 and I'm just going to mark uh, little dots where I have potential integer solutions. So I can't buy a partial of a barrel, I have to buy a full barrel. Um, so I'm going to evaluate the objective function at every possible solution and I also know that I have uh, non-feasible solutions or infeasible solutions at certain points. So let me go over to Excel for this. I'm going to uh, first of all do my x2, that also is y and then just go ahead and create that plot. These are my objective values. I'm going to just uh, get my objective function here. And uh, let me go ahead and, uh, okay, so now I can see my objective function values for uh, different options of uh, you know x and y. Now I also have lower values. Some of them are not uh, uh, feasible, okay? So um, some, some of these, uh, uh, are not feasible because I need to have a certain amount that I need to produce of each. Okay, so let me go in here and uh, I'm going to make sure that it's less than or greater than or equal to or greater than 100. I'm just going to do greater than 100 first and I'll show you how that changes with greater than or equal to 100. There you can see ones are the ones that are feasible. I'm also going to do the diesel constraint as well here. Okay, so now the diesel constraint and that's those ones are the possible solutions. So what I'm going to do is just multiply by the diesel and the gasoline constraints and anywhere that's zero is going to be infeasible and anywhere that's non-zero is going to be a feasible solution. So this is an exhaustive search. I'm looking over all, uh, let's see, all of the potential values. So 13 times 13 values. I have to evaluate those and there's my lowest objective function. 
Now, one of the things you'll notice with this is that I did greater than 100. But let's say I do greater than or equal to 100. And uh, let me go back into the constraints here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and evaluate greater than or equal to 100 instead. Okay, and greater than or equal to 160 for the diesel constraint. And now you can see that I have a different optimal solution because I had uh, not uh, equal inequality constraint that is uh, greater than versus greater than or equal to. So that's just one thing you have to watch out for in integer programming that you have the correct inequality constraints. Okay, so those are my two solutions. That was an exhaustive search. I'll, however, that's least efficient. Most people don't use an exhaustive search except for very simple problems. I'm also going to cover branch and bound now and how to perform that. First, you treat all variables as continuous and solve, um, solve the relaxed problem. This is called a relaxed problem. There's my solution. And then you select one of the variables that's non-integer for branching. Okay, so what we want to do is uh, you know, select a variable. Typically, we select the one with the, that's, least, uh, cl that's uh, least closest to an integer value. Okay, so something that's like closest to 0.5. Okay, so what we want to do in this case is do the x2 uh, or y value. Okay, and um, what I will do is uh, you know, just add an extra constraint here to my original problem that x2 is going to be uh, greater than or equal to 3 and then also less than or equal to 2. And then we will solve, uh, you know, this top part, we'll always solve that same part and then add these constraints to restrict uh, the values and, and, and do this branching, okay, the upper and lower uh, values. Okay, so we'll do both of those. And uh, then the third is we'll just continue branching until all of the values are within a certain tolerance of an integer value. Okay, all of them are at integer values and we don't have any others that we can explore that might be potential solutions. Okay, so in this case, I'm gonna start off with just my relaxed solution. This is my root node. And I'm just gonna record the solution and the objective function. That's gonna be a lower bound for my objective function. Now I'm gonna branch on y. Okay, so y less than or equal to two and greater than or equal to three. And go ahead and solve it again, record the solution. So the less than or equal to two gave me a solution of my objective function and an upper bound is an integer solution, so it's gonna be an upper bound for my objective. And I'm gonna solve that with greater than or equal to three as well. And that's not an integer solution that we can't eliminate because it's not, uh, it's lower than the upper bound. Okay, so I'm gonna branch on x now because that's non-integer. And uh, let me go ahead and do the x branch and go ahead and solve the first one Okay, so I uh, have another integer solution, but not as good as the prior integer solution. Okay, now I'm gonna do the other branch as well on x. Okay, just putting in those uh, constraints. And I came up uh, with another one, uh, integer solution, but not quite as good as the prior inner one, integer one. Okay, so no more branches to explore. We'll go ahead and return the best integer solution in this case. And that will be our optimal value. Okay, now another way to do this is just put int in front of your variable names and that will enforce them so that they are integer values and you'll see that it'll come up with an integer solution for you and you can see some of the branching that it does with the solver. Okay, so if you don't wanna to have to do that yourself, you can solve it like that. For this example, we were able to visit all possible integer points at an objective function less than the upper bound. Other cases, it's not possible to visit all of the points without excessive computational time. So typically we stop when we're within a gap of uh, uh, the, the best solution possible. And so we define gap as the difference between the best integer objective and the lower bound of the relaxed solutions divided by those two quantities added together. And as long as we're within a certain tolerance, then we say that we can terminate the, uh, the optimization and accept the best solution. Okay, so um, let me just graphically depict this. Uh, so we have iterations or solutions. Now these are relaxed solutions with, with bounds, uh, extra bounds placed on them. And uh, so we might have a root node, for example, that we solved when 
we removed all integrality constraints and then we may have integer solutions along the way that are upper bounds and then when we're within a certain gap of the best solution so we know that that's the lower bound and an upper bound then we stop and say that the best integer solution is our solution to this problem visit apmonitor.com for additional course material and optimization software